ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग डियर पार्टिसिपेंट एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू एक्सपर्ट आल्सो नाउ द एक्सपर्ट हैज ज्वाइंड टू गिविंग देयर टू डिलीवर देयर लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक द अनसर्टेनिटी क्वांटिफिकेशन इन ट्राइबोलॉजी एंड बियरिंग ट्राइबोलॉजी सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग हिज लेक्चर i just want to introduce sir that dr sudeep day is working as assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering nit silchar itself previously he was post doctoral researcher at leibniz institute of polymer research dresden germany prior to that he was post doctoral research assistant in college of engineering swansea uh, swansea U university united kingdom and worked with professor uh, gert henrich and professor sandeepan adhikari respectively he received his bachelor's and phd degree from jadhavpur university his area of specialization is tribology applied mechanics and machine design he has more than 14 year experience in research teaching industrial and professional activities his current research interest includes uncertainty quantification tribology of bearing molecular dynamics mechanics of meta materials composites and functionally graded structure he has filed two patents and published several papers in uh, reputed international journals he has also author of a book uh, which title has is uncertainty quantification in laminated composites a beta model based approach that is published with crc press he is a regular reviewer of many international reputed journal and he is also the executive council member of indian society of theoretical and applied mechanics so we are honored to receive his lecture so please i request sir so please deliver the lecture to participants thank you thank you very much uh, dr rajiv uh we first open now can you all see the presentation yes sir we can see okay yeah that's great uh good morning everybody uh thank you very much to our organization to our uh, take you uh, three for organizing this workshop and uh, it is really my privilege uh, to deliver this talk in front of you and uh this topic title is uncertainty quantification in tribology and bearing tribology now uh, before uh, starting my this topic um, uh, i would like to give you the outline of this entire uh, talk uh, which is i have classified into two part one is the uncertainty quantification part and second part will be tribology and bearing uh, tribology under uncertainty now before starting my presentation uh, i i would like to show you uh, uh, today i was searching with a string tribology uncertainty in google i hope you you all can see this and what i have found it here uh, most of the papers i mean what are whatever the resources we do have available till day uh i have searched and some important features which is we got in journal of tribology that is future direction in tribology wherein it is mentioned that uncertainty uh, uh quantification can be one big area in the tribology and you will be surprised to know this paper it is published in the year 1987 so 
So it's quite long, long back. And let me tell you, as on date, truly the uncertainty quantification in the area of tribology has not properly addressed. I mean, what should be the, it, is, it should be addressed, but till date, we have not gone through that. Okay. So uh, coming to our presentation once again. So first of all, we will try to go to the first part of our presentation. Uh, that is uncertainty quantification. Now, there is a great saying by John Allen Paul that uncertainty is the only certainty there is and knowing how to live with the insecurity is the only security because uh, so far the present situation is concerned or our day-to-day -day life everywhere if you see in and around us everywhere there is uncertainty i mean if you talk about the uh, weather forecasting uh, for rainfall or if you are talking of the gain or loss in investment in the financial market say like stock market if you talk about the measurement error that is uh, influence uh, in, i mean added with the accuracy of the machines or the instruments if you talk about the any other uh, systems which is related to the engineering uh, in industries like uh, civil, mechanical, aerospace, uh, electronics, everywhere it is linked. If you are talking of the uh, winning of the gambling, I mean, or playing the disc, or you are talking, uh, we can talk about the occurrence of the events like birth, death, uh, accidents. Uh, uh, like every day what we are doing like we are now talking we are you are listening uh, the next moment after two hours what can you predict exactly what you will be doing perhaps not because we do not know the future hmm. right now uh, all the human I am talking of the human behavior action reactions if you talk about the biological systems the same thing will happen I mean, how we are moving our body. I mean, this more, this time I am moving my hands. Now, the next moment I will hear, note my note my head. So everything is uncertain, and everything it is subjected to uh, in the scale of space and time. Everything is uncertain. Okay, so that's what uh, we need to think of now. There is another saying that it is made by the Pierre Simon Laplace who told that the future, just like the past, would be present before its eyes. Now, if you think of this, this conics where the point of this intersection of these two in two conics, wherein the red part is past, where the future part is the is marked as blue now first question comes to us is can we quantify our present can we quantify the past or can we quantify the future so keeping in this mind if you see if you go start with our old i mean ancient age or right from the uh, dawn of our society dawn of the civilization when the solar systems comes into play hmm. wherein initially aristotle and pythagoras they proposed one solar model wherein it was told that earth is at the center and it is surrounded by the moon and the sun who, which are rotated during that during the time it was 500 bc it's long back and it was initially made because of at that point of time uh, there was a need for crop production so that's why it was proposed by Aristotle and Pythagoras 
and later on Ptolemy during 300 BC he proposed a little bit of different model that was also found incomplete we are not talking as the I mean that's a wrong model it is incomplete wherein it is showing that moon and sun they are rotating but they are rotating about their own axis as well but today's solar system model which we are conceptualizing that is whether true or not that is also a big question now parallelly if you talk about the atomic model wherein we start with the concept of the atom initially it was made by the aristotle later on dalton after that rutherford niels bohr b brockley swedinger so everybody has added the model of the atom in different perspective like if we talk about the niels bohr he talked about the the angular momentum of the atom and if you talk about the swedinger's he talked about the probability of occurrence or likelihoodness of the electron cloud which is much more advanced than niels bohr or de broglie's concept of the atomic model so day by day as time passes on we are coming to the real picture of the model so what exactly we thought of in past that is not exactly in present so keeping in that mind uh this is uh i coined it as a river of uncertainty because whenever we any system we design we have some design output and there are some real output now there is always a deviation between the reality and the design one now for example if we are talked uh, about making of a shaft with diameter of 50 mm so whenever we do the machining process or any super super duper fine machining process uh, with high very very high accuracy there will be always a minimum very very minute amount of deviation so there will be always a river of uncertainty which has to be crossed and this is based on the frame of reference now what is the frame of reference now this is nothing but we are actually surrounded by some scientific thoughts and which are underlined with some scientific laws theories postulates now what is that now if we take an example like say ohm's law which talks about if material temperature and other parameter remains constant then the voltage drop will be proportionate with the current that is v is proportional to i keeping temperature and material and other parameter remaining constant now if the temperature material property and other parameter remains variable what will happen to that will the v will proportional to i no so there is always a limitation of all laws theories everywhere i mean right from newton's laws of gravitation to our new concept of say if you are talking of today's tribology everywhere all the signs behind has some limitation now if you talk about this then what is how to cross this river because there will be always this uncertainty now why first comes to the problems how it is arising i mean problems will be if we are not encountering proper exact value and design properly there may be in tribology there may be the wear 
excessive crash, insufficient lubrication, some wear will be there, and ultimately misalignment, bearing crosses, dirt or debris intrusion will be there, and ultimately everything will lead to the failure of the system. That's what actually we are facing up because all the component cannot be perpetual. It has always a certain life. But what is our aim? Our aim is to maximize how we can design the things considering the uncertainty. Because whenever we stop our formulation of design, there is the starting point of uncertainty. Now, this is the way how we can bridge the uncertainty river. And we engineers, we have to mitigate that. We have used this, we call it the bridge of factor of safety. Now, I think we all engineers know what is factor of safety. I'm not going to tell what is factor of safety. So we know that. Now, why the factor of safety and now say in, in any system or design, somebody is there talking like factor of safety will be two. Somebody will be telling three. Now what is the basis of two and three? Sometimes it is leading to the over design and sometimes it is going to be under design if you put factor of safety low. And we do not know what exactly the real outcome because real outcome is something which is subjected to many other related parameters. Now, what are those parameters? Like it may be some surrounding environmental issues, maybe some operational issues, maybe some material issues, maybe related to some geometric issues. So plenty of related issues are there which actually is always influencing the real outcome. Now to bridge this, we are smartly using this factor of safety, but it may lead to the failure also, because if it is not so, then all these accidents still that we have experienced, like crashing of the bridge, I mean, all the system design, would have not been possible. Now, coming to the engineering design. Now, in engineering design, what is our target? Our target is always sometimes in the first diagram, you can see this is off target and low variability. Now, here in the second diagram, you see this is on target, but this is having high variability. Here you can see it is off target but high variability. But what exactly are required? Our required is it should be on target with low variability. Now, how can we quantify this uncertainty? Before that, we need to understand the difference between probability and possibility. Because Future is uncertain and every engineering system is always subjected to some uncertainty. Now, there is a great saying by Einstein that God doesn't play dice with the universe. Now, everything which is happening, it is not because of the God. It is because of the uncertainty of occurrence. Now, what is the difference between them probability and possibility? Probability, now let me give you one example. Like if I toss a coin, so it has head or tail. So what will be the probability of getting head and getting tail? Definitely everybody knows that it will be 50% and 50%. 50% head and 50% tail. Absolutely correct. But if I put a little bit of change, now if I make the surface on which the coin 
after flipping it will fall on that is a mud now there will be one possibility when the coin will stuck on the mud neither flat that is neither head nor tail it will vertically dig into the mud then the question comes what is the probability of getting head and tail here will it be higher than 50 percent is or will it be less than 50 percent is what will be the exact value of probability so there lies the questions that all pro probables are possibles but not all possibles may not be probable and vice versa all impossibles are improbable but not all improbable are impossible now the question comes what is random random means which is generated in a random manner that means wherein we cannot have some relationship of occurrence like if you talk, if you the super super lotto or the lottery how the numbers are coming which is like in random way it is occurring so like this we can have plenty of examples like if you see every time you open a youtube video if you see after the writing of the youtube.com slash there will be some alphanumeric characteristics and those alphanumeric characteristics are generated randomly and no the number alphanumeric characteristics are same corresponding to a particular web link so that is also we call it the random now if something trend is there then we cannot call it as a random wherein we can establish some relationship now why i am talking on because we need to talk about the law of large numbers because when we are talking of the law of large numbers the probability density is close to the long run cumulative frequency that means probability now i am uh, uttering another new term to you that is probability density now what is probability density probability density in a simple way you can think of the likelihoodness of the occurrence of any particular event now in today's world we have the information we have the data and based on data if you can organize those data we can make we are always trying to make some relationship whether it is experimental work or computational work or analytical work so once we have the relationship between one parameter or two or more parameters we can say that yes there is some establishment of the relationship and that can be ordered but there may be some kind of degree of inorderness so there will be when it will be happening then we are calling it as uncertain now coming to the next part before we are talking of the model we need to understand what are the different types of uncertainty first type of uncertainty we call it the aleatoric uncertainty wherein we know actually uh, the variations what are the variation and how we can get that variations by means of experiments by means of analytical process by means of computation we have the variations and that variations may be may have some certain limit and based on that we can make the mapping of the variation like 
if you talk about the say temperature in the month of this month say in the month of august so every every in every august month what is the temperature is going on in say in delhi or in silchar we can have the past data and we can have the assessment and in last say 50 years or 100 years what is the variation of this temperature and based on that we can have the relationship with the temperature and the other parameters like if you talk about the relative humidity or any other rainfall any other parameters now there is a mathematical scientist in uk george box who told that all models are wrong now what is model models are nothing but basically the equation it is nothing but mathematical equation it is composed of several variables and parameters and those parameters which are we are under using but there may be some parameters on which we do not know there lies the another type of uncertainty we call it the we call it the epistemic uncertainty in case of epistemic uncertainty we have lack of knowledge of the uncertainty because now how let us take some example to understand this now if you talk about the aleatoric uncertainty say suppose when we are measuring by a scale with some length and the scale is say made up of steel now steel is subjected to elongation if the temperature rises okay now if temperature goes up the length of the scale also elongates so due to extension of the scale the length which we are measuring which will also get affected so that's why temperature and the length has some interdependency so there will be the uncertainty of the measurement if the temperature varies so there lies the aleatoric type of uncertainty now talking about the second type of uncertainty like we call it the epistemic uncertainty wherein we have the lack of knowledge now if a spacecraft say it goes to the in the space therein there may be some other influences some other parameter which is known not known to us but that is also influencing the system characteristics that is called the uncertainty wherein we do not know the parameter what parameter is that that is also we do not know. like another example we can take like the cabin noise in the helicopter in the helicopter the cabin noise can be made because of the several reasons and which reasons is influencing that that is also not known to us apart from this there may be another type of uncertainty we call it the prejudicial uncertainty and what is that prejudicial uncertainty and that prejudicial uncertainty we call it wherein we have the we do not know the scale okay we do not know the scale suppose there we have understood the parameter it is happening but by which scale we will be measuring that that is not known to us like for measuring the length we have the scale to measure but there may be some parameter which is not known to us and how to measure that scale that is also not known to us now how let us take the example of this prejudicial uncertainty prejudicial uncertainty occurs say uh, we are talking of the viscous damping in every system 
viscous damping occurs when say there will be one solid component and between that two component there will be some fluid component or liquid component and which is actually creating the viscous damping now what will be the features of the viscous damping that is not known to us because true viscous damping is a myth but still for the sake of mathematical application and just to sake of the calculation we are using that there will be some true damping so ultimately we come to the conclusion that all models are invalid but some are fit for the specific purpose how because like if you talk about the weather modeling in case of weather modeling we are talking we are trying to measure all the parameters related to the weather like temperature humidity rainfall because those are very very important issues so like that in engineering also we need to measure different parameters like length it may be some rotational speed maybe because uh, in case of tribe if you are talking of the tribology we will come to it later later on we will discuss in detail the wear friction uh, load carrying capacity all these are highly subjected to uncertain in operation or in real life situation subjected to many parameters influencing parameters now simulators are wrong why because of the incompleteness of the science because there are some signs which we do not know like i was talking of the epistemic uncertainty wherein we do not know what parameter actually influencing in space because we do not know everywhere in the space what what are the influencing parameters so the spacecraft will be subjected to what and what different parameters which are unknown to us still so that science is also incomplete there may be the error in science there may be error in the parameter itself some initial conditions or the forcing variables now there is another point we call we have coined it here we call it the surrogates surrogate errors is nothing but we are actually trying to frame the exactly exactly the same uh, model compared to the real one like it is just like making a prototype of a bigger one like if you want to uh, have the big bridge we can we we have to start with a small bridge model what we call it generally in industry term we call it as a mock up we generally try to frame up a mock up and after framing up this mock up we go on the real life real life prototype there may be the solution error the coding error the solution error like we know now pi the value let's take the example of pi pi can be calculated in many ways and the accuracy of the pi will be different if we consider the different way of getting the solution like we know that uh, uh, our great scientist ramanujan he uh, has also given one way of getting the solution of the pi some other way also we have we have come to know different other ways of getting the solution of pi there may be the coding error also because how we are making the solution depending on that the error will be calculated now let us talk about the what the uncertainty will come the uncertainty we will come this is how might the simulator output differs from the true real world value and that is the simulator is supposed to be predicted now 
there is always a real value and there may be some simulated value now the real value if you talk about the zx which is nothing but the summation of the surrogate error code error parametric error and model structures errors also now coming to the next part what is surrogate error surrogate uncertainty now in case of surrogate uncertainty we have the many kinds of surrogate which has no measure of uncertainty now what is that as i told you surrogate is also can be called as emulator now emulator what is surrogate or emulator what has all these things this is nothing but say suppose we have the relationship with x y and the outcome is z we have two inputs x and y and z is our output now if we make the relation If I talk about the mechanical, uh, the what is the deflection of uh, of say cantilever beam at loaded at the free end? At that value, it is known to everybody that P L Q by three E I. But we can get that by means of integration process also. We can get by means of analytical way also. we can get by some other bending equation by energy method also so by the different using we can get also by uh, uh, minimum potential energy method also so by using different methods of getting the same value of the deflection of the cantilever beam wherein there is a point load at the free end the different value the accuracy of that value will be occurring so so for the different methodology the code will be framed depending on that we have we will have some code on certain depending on the difference model the so model solution with the two parameter and their estimates based on that we will have the parametric error we have the model structure error also which is actually the difference between the reality and the theoretical pr uh, prediction of the model now if we are compiling all this computational modeling in the uncertainty so we can have the real life system based on that we are actually trying to frame from physics based model which is nothing but some sort of ordinary differential equation or partial differential equation uh, so based on some we are trying to frame those equations but these equations are not calibrated because these are sub subjected to some system errors and there may be the error in the input also because if the inputs are varying itself then what will be the output like earlier i was talking about the measuring of the length by by means of steel scale if the temperature itself is going up the length of the scale is increasing then what we are measuring will that be the true one no because the length of the each graduation that is also elongated so we are not getting the real true length there may be the computational uncertainty is also so all slabbing all this experimental there also the experimental errors because every time you we replicate the same experiment 
keeping the same boundary condition we will get we may get the different results there i mean that happens so there may be the experimental error as well so clubbing all this together we need to train the model out now first challenge is the certainty uncertainty in the modeling next challenge is first uncertainty propagation because first we need to mane identify what are the sources of uncertainty where the uncertainty is initiated then we need to find out how the uncertainty is propagated and how it is coming to affect the output quantity of inputs that is our object so i am just keeping it this up because we need to validate and verify all this uh, simulation now uncertainty can be one we call it divided into the parametric uncertainty another may be the non parametric uncertainty now parametric uncertainty will be of the random variables and where in in case of non parametric we will uh, using this random matrix uh, now what is the difference between random variable and random matrix random variable will be the variable where the parameter itself will vary and there will be some mean value and based on that we are uh, we have some perturbation and based on that we will have the bound on the variation of the input but in case of random matrix the entire domain we will be de discretizing into the different small grid point or a, in or nodal points and every point every parameter are subjected to variation that we are considering in case of random matrix so you can understand what kind of randomness we are considering in case of random matrix in the entire domain it is considered now there is inherent complexity and anisotropy and multidisciplinary nature of the tribological behavior so uncertainty propagation is always becoming a threat and as our it is as i told you this is arising out of geometric material environmental or operation more specially vary uh, parameters is going on so now it is a challenge to the designer we need to frame the suitable efficient model and or uh, uh, so that we can frame the suitable manufacturing process also so that we can minimize the failure uh, and we can optimize the design parameter and ultimately leading to the reliability of the product and we ultimately we are our aim is to map the acceptable range and the critical design point by efficient computational model now the what are the sources now one will be the experimental source experimental error another will be the parametric uncertainty there may be the computational uncertainty another will be the modeling uncertainty now the problem is the reliability reliability of what reliability of all the components that we are using it may be a bearing it may be a bridge it may be any component it may be electrical civil aerospace mechanical any components and we are concerned about the failure of that components and we are also concerned about the longer life of that component and also cost is a very important factor and we need to ensure the safety and maintenance minimal minimization of maintenance is also required and parallelly we are threatened with the impreciseness of the data how impreciseness what is impreciseness impreciseness means wherein we have the limitation of the data why limitation because all the experiments in our whether it is in our science or engineering everywhere experiments can give a limitation 
so limited value of experimental results are there so limitation by limited data it will be very difficult to to go for the stochastic or the randomness into it and all the variability when it is subjected to randomness it is always subjected to different kind of uh, variability in terms of incompleteness in data in case of uh, varying reproduction conditions during sampling so the issues are first is what are the sources of uncertainty these are the very key questions it is framed here then how does the uncertainty propagates from the lower level to the higher scale because scale is very important now when the scales are inseparable what will happen what is the best way to model this because large number when we will be dealing with how can we make within a bound how we can make the, make the map how what are the sensitivity of input parameters now what is meant by the sensitivity sensitivity means what is the influencing most influencing parameter into the system say suppose in the bearing there may be plenty of parameters or say when you are talking of the helicopter dynamics when we are concerning the cabin noise in the helicopter there may be plenty of uh, parameters which are actually creating the cabin noise interdependent parameters are there how it is going to affect that can we address which parameters is making maximum influencing influence on for creating that noise so our first objective is to identify and define the problem of random tribological behavior at different scale levels so here also we can go for the multi scale analysis as well so we need to develop the model assimilation of the blot sizes like model updating model verification and model validation is required then we need to quantify the uncertain behavior and develop the novel reduced order model now why reduced order modeling because when we are going for the random analysis we generally use the common method we call it the monte carlo simulation which is which is uh, coined as mcs monte carlo simulation so wherein we need to have minimum 10000 samples and you can understand by no experimental procedure we can generate the 10000 number of experiments experiment sample that is practically absurd nobody can get 10000 number of experimental samples so by experimental process it is next to impossible so that's why we need to frame the mathematical model and now, now when we are doing this so having huge amount of computational time now for getting those to shorten those time what we do we generally reduce the model that is called the reduced order modeling i am come to that later now based on that we need to build the system and under this we need to frame this uncertainty quantification now as we talk about we i think we have already discussed about this aleatory epistemic and prejudicial uncertainty and we will have to start with with the bottom up approach and what is bottom up approach wherein we will start with the lower end and it will go to the lower end means it is starting from the inputs we will go to the output if inputs are varying what will be the varying towards the output and what are the prime sources of uncertainties is material or geometric uncertainties environmental uncertainties i think we have already discussed on it and based on that generally we frame different kind of response surface modeling 
So we'll come to that later. Uncertainty modeling, general UQ approach by is probabilistic model and the possibilistic model. Now, possibility is the which is backed by some limitedness. Like if we are having some limitation, limited data, we can have some uh, different kind of approach, like Damster Safer approach. We can have the interval approach, evidence theory. So these are the different parameters. Uh, other than we can have the parametric uncertainty quantification like point discretization method, series expansion, cardinal law of expansion theory. And after that, we can have go to the deeper side also that is called the quantum stochastic approach, wherein we are reaching towards the quantum of the material. So all the uncertainties it is coming from not only from the atomic level, it is coming from absolutely towards the quantum, quantum level. And from the quantum level, this uncertainty is actually promulgated towards the macro scale level. And it is ultimately leading to the macro level output quantity variation. Now, when we are doing this, there is a curse of dimensionality. When we are trying to optimize this, this is always demanding a problem. These are the different modeling methods and sampling techniques. And these are already, you can, if you want to have this discuss, so we can have my, uh, my book, I'll show it to you. Now, this is the basic flowchart or flow diagram, generally uncertainty, any uncertainty quantification should follow one is there will be some initial input every system will have some inputs and if these inputs are considered to be stochastic in nature that means there will be always variability in the input and based on that we need to screen off the input and based on that we have to select the design point and after design point, we formulate the predictive meta model equation. And if it is checked for the noise, because all the data may have some noise into it. So we need to filter those noise. So noise is actually, you can say it is the uh, some impurities into, into which are actually influencing the output variability. So if we can discard those noise part, we can get the real buildup of the model. So that's all for now. And uh, I would like to show you, that's a small interval. And meanwhile, you just have a look into this uh, video on uncertainty.
welcome back once again now coming to the next part of this uh, presentation uh, wherein we will be discussing on the tribology and bearing tribology under uncertainty now here this part we have started uh, two three years back uh, because this area which is uh, a long area a lot of research has been done but dealing with the uncertainty in the tribology uh, you can find a very little uh, little bit it is addressed now in tribology as we know that it is a multidisciplinary uh, area wherein you will find the application of solid mechanics like wherein we have the we need to find out the contact stresses the load the load carrying capacities next is like uh, fluid mechanics wherein uh, we will have the different parameters uh, of the fluid properties like viscosity next uh, like material science wherein uh, we need to find out the different uh, material properties we need to know the uh, different wear rates how much friction it is subjected to friction what is the hardness of the material the chemistry is also included in it like uh, if uh, is there any reaction between the uh, the lubricants and the uh, rotating components or the bearing surfaces like not only the bearing i mean if you think of the other mechanical components like uh, gears cams uh, uh, brakes seals all this rolling and sliding components these are all uh, are always uh, subjected to uncertainty so there is a big area wherein nobody has touched that uh, analysis of uncertainty into that area now first of all uh, we need to discuss first on bearing uh, what are the different classes of uh, different classes of bearing based on the lubrication we know that uh, first is the dry uh, bearing lubrication then uh, boundary lubricated bearing then elastic hydrodynamic bearing uh, next is hydrostatic bearing and then aerostatic bearing then hydrodynamic bearing then aerodynamic bearing then squeeze film bearing uh, then uh, magnetic bearing like if you talk about the elastic hydrodynamic bearing it's a very interesting part uh, i mean the, this area is totally untouched uh, and this is not uh, the under uncertainty it is not done because the deflection will occur at a time in the rotating surface as well as the recess of the bearing and if it is subjected to uncertainty what will happen that is not addressed by anybody uh, at least i have not found any single paper on it next uh, first of all if we are trying to address the uncertainty in tribology we need to find out uh, the first trying to find out the experimental way now what are those experimental way like we have the pin on disc wear volume measurement now in this or we have the wear rate analysis or uh, sometimes we try to uh, frame the relationship between load bearing capacity with respect to the rotation of speed for say hydrodynamic journal bearing now whenever we are talking of this as i as we know there is always a limitation of experiments because in stochastic analysis or in a, whenever we are trying to frame the randomness in the parameters we generally use the monte carlo simulation which requires minimum 10000 number of samples so 10000 number of uh, sam uh, sample preparation and subsequently 10000 number of experimentation you can imagine how much time it will require for uh, i mean one life or two life will be ex uh, exhausted for completion of this uh, task 
but that is absolutely impossible physically that is practically not feasible so in that case now what we will do generally what we generally presume what are the um, basis we are using like if you are talking of the uh, say coefficient of friction we generally presume from our from our uh, high school days that is mu which is coefficient no, i mean popularly known as coefficient of friction mu is equal to 0.3 say so 0.3 now the question comes it may be 0.295 it may be 0.3 305 or it may be any other value not exactly 0.3 because the surface on which the two matting material because tribology is a science wherein there will be some relative motion between the two matting surfaces and when this kind of surface and there will be some lubricants if it is in between the parameters which are affecting into it like friction like wear like lubrication these are the characteristics which will be subjected to many many variations now the next question comes what is the guarantee that we will get exactly mu value is 0.3 now if you see the tribological system the basic fundamental tribological system if you can see here wherein there will be the two components component 1 and component 2 in between there will be some lubricating film and say component 1 is static uh, which is we can which can be idealized as your uh, bearing recess and component 2 is say it is the rotating component rotating shaft or journal uh, which are under motion and which will be carrying the load and here the inputs are like load which is uh, and also there will be the motion and when there will be the motion there will be the velocity and in case of output it will be the friction which will be subjected to wear and that is also when the friction and wear automatically it will be occurring there will be some variation of temperature as well now when the temperature will vary definitely the viscosity of the intermediate lubricants that will also change now how it will be changing in the entire domain that's the question now for our analysis what we can do we have done the stochastic dynamic analysis of the journal bearing wherein we have found out the effect of stochastic parameter on dynamic characteristics of two axial group two lobe three lobe bearing we conducted the sensitivity analysis for influence uh, for getting the which parameter is the most influencing parameter and we constructed the surrogate model for stochastic dynamic analysis now this work actually it is the entire work of my two students one uh, was in uh, in mtech students he passed out already and another phd students who is actually carrying out this task now as we see the journal bearing we have the journal which is rotating and in between bearing cover or the recess there will be the lubricants and the actual objective is to able to handle the high load and velocities and inherent uncertainty it is in nature and it need to precise the prediction now what we are having this because we are having the reynolds equation for the plane cylindrical journal bearing which is uh, this equation wherein you see that this is the journal and this is the recess and there will be some eccentricity that all the parameters are given that capital r is the bearing radius 
C is the radial clearance, eta is the oil viscosity, and omega or cap gamma is the rotational speed, and P is, and H are the pressure and the film thickness, and we have the film thickness, the minimum film thickness HO, which is related with the radial clearance and the eccentricity, and the other angles like pi is the attitude angle and theta is the circumferential coordinates. And by using linear perturbation method, we get the px value. Now here you please take a note that this vertical lower direction is our x direction and horizontal direction is our z direction. And the normal to this plane, what you are seeing in your screen, that is our z direction, normal to this point. Now, if we have this, we started with the Reynolds equation. And as you know, that Reynolds equation has the assumptions of laminar flow, li uh, lubricants as Newtonian, and continuous incompressible. It is, has got the constant fluid viscosity. There is negligible effect of the pressure variation in the y direction we have considered. The viscous force it is also uh, uh, given and the, uh, the body force is neglected here. And this is the Reynolds equations for the plain uh, cylindrical journal bearing. And this is the, in the non-dimensional form and wherein wherein you see the C0, which is the no nominal value of the bearing clearance. Epsilon is the non-dimensional eccentricity ratio. And coming to the individual parameter one after another. Now this first parameter, this parameter PO, we call it as the pressure at steady state, which is taken as a non-dimensional form. And PS, it is the normal value of the supply pressure. Next, we have the PS, which is the PX is the pressure derivative. And here you see, after PS, we have put it as omega cap, which actually indicates the degree of stochasticity. So that means this PX value in earlier case also, this PO also, this is also changing. It is subjected to changes in, in the entire domain. Okay. Now, here also, Px, which is the pressure derivative about the with respect to the x, and Py, which is the pressure derivative with respect to the y, and Px dot, which is the pressure derivative with respect to x dot, wherein C0 is the nominal value of the bearing clearance, PS0 is the nominal value of oil supply pressure and omega is the angular velocity here. Next, PY dot here, pressure derivative with respect to the Y dot, it is also non dimensionalized. Now, H0, H0, it is called the film thickness at steady state condition, which is also non dimensionalized. Now, here, C0 is the same nominal value of the bearing clearance and epsilon is the E by C0, which is non-dimensional and eccentricity ratio. Now here also there is another parameter, we call it C bar omega pair. Now C bar omega cap, which is nothing but C by C0. Now here, this is known as the bearing number, which is uh, given as related with this equation. This is also non-dimensionalized, whereas eta zero is the nominal value of oil viscosity, omega is the angular velocity, C zero is the nominal value of bearing clearance, and PS zero is the nominal value of oil supply pressure. So this is basically nothing but that all the equations are partially partial partial differential equations. So 
what we need to have we need to first know what are the different parameters here and now then we will come to how we can solve these equations and get our required output quantity of interest and here all the parameters which are we are discussing are stochastic in nature that is all the parameters are varying simultaneously okay then what will be the effect to the output quantity of interest okay and that sounds very interesting so here z bar is the z coordinate and wherein l is the bearing length now here is x omega cap is the stochastic bearing number which is also non dimensionalized next here omega bar it is also known as stochastic oil viscosity and that is also uh, non dimensionalized as because eta zero is nominal value of the oil viscosity then here ps which is the stochastic supply pressure now let's put the boundary conditions the boundary conditions first boundary condition is when p0 del p0 by p theta del theta is equal to 0 when z is equal to 1 and p0 equal to 0 at z equal to 0 second third is p0 equal to 1 while px bar equal to py bar equal to px dot bar equal to py dot bar equal to 0 at theta equal to theta l and theta equal to theta t. Now what is theta l and theta t? Theta l is the angle at the leading edge of the group and theta t is the angle at the trailing edge of the group. And p0 bar is the non-dimensional steady state pressure theta is the circumferential coordinate px bar and py bar are the pressure derivative with respect to x and y respectively and px dot bar and py dot bar are the non dimensionalized pressure derivative with respect to x dot and y dot respectively now how how we will do the solution now the solution method we will use the finite difference method wherein we make the entire domain because the domain is circular now in the circular if you take the it is just like a cylindrical surface isn't it the bearing surface is just like a plain cylindrical bearing which is nothing but a cylindrical surface now if you open that cylindrical surface the envelope of the cylindrical surface it will become a rectangle if you just open it and that rectangle we are discretizing and we have discretized into the different grid points and those grid points we are actually developing view the bearing half showing this mesh size at del theta and del z one is the theta direction another is the z direction and how the del theta will be coming it will be 2 pi by n because why 2 pi because the entire circular angular displacement is nothing but 360 degree 360 degree means 2 pi 2 pi divided by y n because m equal part we have considered and next is z del theta z why this is del theta z del theta z is nothing but 1 by n now why n n is the number of divisions equal part we are considering along the z direction now after that we have discretized this part now after that we have to carry out the convergence criteria what is that convergence criteria we have convergence criteria as 1 minus sigma p old by sigma p new this value must be less than 10 to the power minus pi that means that means the total the pressure old pressure divided by summation of new pressure that must be less than less than the it is actually it should be coming towards zero that means it is taking as 10 to the power minus 5 so as we minimize the error we are actually 
reaching towards the true value. Now, considering the central tendency difference method for partial differential equation, we have this first second order derivative, then del p del z, del h del theta. So all these values we have, and in our cases, we considered n as 88 and n as 14. We have seen that this is this value is convergent. And this is the equation after solving this. This is the combined equation wherein all the parameters are given here in this equation. And we can get the pressure Pij. Here it is, you see, it is written in a very small form. It is Pij. Pij means nothing but pressure about any point, any nodal, any grid point Ij. So that is given by this equation. So we can get the pressure at any grid point and we can see the variation of pressure into the entire domain. Now the solution scheme. Now solution scheme, it is I have already told, first the convergence criteria it is we have given we, by using this finite difference method. The attitude angle we consider it as it is tan inverse of wy bar by wx bar. And calculation, we start with some assumed value of the attitude angle and compare this with the calculated value and repeat it with the new value of the attitude angle until the difference of two value is less than 0 0.1. So as we do that, we can reach towards the true value. And this is the flow algorithm wherein we first initialize what are the inputs. Inputs are for bearing, we have the L by D ratio, we have the epsilon, then ensign, all these parameters we consider, we consider it is subjected to certain percentage of variation. And we set the boundary condition. Then after that, we iterate with some n number of samples. And this n sam is nothing but 10,000 for Monte Carlo simulation. So 10,000 number of samples we can generate. And accordingly, by solving the steady state Reynolds equation, we and by using that, we can calculate the initial pressure. Now, if the pressure is converging, yes or no? If it is no, then again it will be repeated. So there is a loop here. Then if it is yes, then we calculate the corresponding different parameters like W, that is load bearing capacity, uh, mu value, S value, F value, Q value. So all, then we go for the dynamic pressure. Then we calculate the stiffness and the damping coefficient. The stiffness coefficient and damping coefficient, these are the very important parameters for the dynamic analysis because these are the very important parameter and subsequently we get the stiffness uh, mass mass matrix and the stiffness matrix accordingly after that we again see the iteration if it is the iteration is higher than sample in sam then we uh, it is equal to the NSAM, then we stop it, analyze the results, otherwise we repeat it once again. So this is the, this is the second loop. Okay? This is the second loop. So we uh, we can do it any, we, we have done it in MATLAB and uh, I know, you know that in MATLAB uh, coding is quite nowadays easy. Uh, you can also try and you can also do it. Now for the validation part, we have validated our results with one uh, results of uh, experimental results uh, of PINCAS and uh, this is the results for different attitude angle, friction variable, somophile number, mass parameters. So these are our present value and, and these are the PINCAS value. So this is for the different eccentricity ratios we get the results. And these results are found 
quite uh, near us. And these are validated. Now coming to the performance parametric study. Now in parametric study, we have seen the performance parametric parameters like for steady state characteristics, first parameter is our load bearing capacity. Now in case of load bearing capacity, you see, first is we need to calculate this radial load bearing load component, another is the tangential load component. And you can see uh, how we can calculate it uh, by means of formulation. And after that, we can have the value of total load. And there will be one radial component, as you see here. This is the radial component. This is the tangential component. And accordingly, we get the value. And here, C is the radial clearance. Eta is the coefficient of dynamic viscosity. U is the tangential surface speed of the journal. R is the radius of the journal. L is the length of the bearing, which is not shown in the diagram. Length is, it is, uh, it is in the uh, normal axis to this plane. The plane you are seeing, the picture you are seeing. Okay. So after that, we have the attitude angle. Next is attitude angle, which is uh, basically the ratio of the tangential uh, direction, tangential load, and to the radial load, uh, tan inverse of this. And again, we have the friction coefficient value. In the friction coefficient value, we have this, uh, this equation. And by solving this equation, we can get the friction coefficient value. Then we have the side leakage, wherein uh, Q bar is uh, calculated by this relationship. And after that, we are coming to the dynamic characteristics, the most uh, interesting part. In the dynamic characteristics, it is presumed as a model like a, uh, it's a spring mass damping system and wherein the bearing races it is considered as a fixed and the journal which is rotating which is subjected to some loading having some load into it so that why that's why this journal is considered as a mass and which are having some uh, linkage with spring mass linkage in between actually we are considering here and this considering the viscous damping we are considering. So that's why we consider the damping coefficient later on. One first is the spring stiff, uh, the stiffness considered. So the stiffness will be Kxx, Kyx, Kxy and Kyy. Now you can say why these four parameters you are coming because the stiffness because we have considered x and y direction so and z direction will be just normal to this plane okay now along the z direction we have said that there will be not sufficient negligible that is that effect is we have neglected in our case we have considered along x and along y if you consider then only along xx one value will be the stiffness the influence of x on y, that is kyx, another will be on y on x, that will be xy, there will be y on y, that will be kyy. And subsequently, we get the four stiffness coefficient here. And in the similar way, we will get the four damping coefficient cxx, cyy, cxy. And uh, it will be C, Z, Y. I, I think it is some typographical uh, mistake here. So uh, here, now, the important thing is that you will see all the parameters in Kx, K and K bar and C bar, all are having omega cap. That means all the parameters are stochastic in nature. Because 
at every domain within this because the domain is entire the envelope and the entire special domain it is subjected to variation and the subsequent stiffness and the damping coefficient along the every point it is varying so this is at this point it will be varying at this point it will be different 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 so all this point surrounding this uh, this envelope enter circular envelope it will be different so these are very then similarly we get the mass parameters then we get the wall ratio subsequently considering the wall frequency of the journal and omega is the here the angular velocity of the journal now coming to the stochastic dynamic analysis of two axial group bearing wherein there is there are two groups here and in between there is journal so here you can understand the bearing surface actually it is not smooth surface it is there will be some always undulation and this is the only reason you can see how the friction where everything will change okay and it is in the entire domain of the this entire circular envelope everywhere it will be changing and for the sake of our analysis for making our simplicity in our analysis we always consider the fixed value till date whatever the analysis we have done whether it is uh, i mean uh, in our mathematical calculation we have done the fixed value but in reality all the value values are will be stochastic in nature and that's why in all other our other earlier parameters all the parameters what we have considered here in steady state characteristics as well as dynamic uh, characteristics everything are stochastic in nature which are denoted by omega cap or omega bar so these are all changes at every instant at every point it has changed and that's why subsequently all the output quantities of interest also changes now this is the validation table for two axial group bearing and which is validated with some results obtained by lund and thompson now coming to the uh, stochastic analysis part of our uh, results in our analysis part we have seen the variation of mass parameter wall ratio and load bearing capacity based on the eccentricity ratio so we are, for this eccentricity ratio and let me tell you all these analysis mostly are done by mcs monte carlo simulation and after that we use the reduced order modeling because every monte carlo simulation we use 10000 number of samples an iteration of 10000 number of sample it cost huge amount of computational time and cost and to reduce that computational time and cost we use the reduced order modeling by formation of the surrogate model and by surrogate model we actually make one equation generalized equation which actually represents which actually uh, replace all the equations and make a single equation by and wherein all the parameter will be there in that single equation and having the output quantity of interest and we will only solve that particular one single equation by means of computation and it can be easily get we can get the easily the output quantity of interest okay so by this way we frame that probability density function we get the output quantity of interest and from that results we get the probability density function which can be done by easily in matlab or any statistical tool or any statistical software we can use that like minitab and 
uh, stat pro different other software is there like uh, here this is the variation of attitude angle and flow parameter and friction parameters based on the eccentricity ratio how it is changing you see this as we change the eccentricity ratio increase the eccentricity ratio the attitude angle is reducing we know that different we know that for the deterministic analysis but when it is becoming stochastic you can see what is the variation of the attitude angle it is like if it is in between 40 55 degree to around 52 degree attitude angle when it is uh, the angle uh, when the eccentricity ratio is 0.4 when it is eccentricity uh, ratio it is 0.6 the attitude angle is reduced it is from say around 40 40 to 45 degree so how the variation also is occurring here so likewise the flow parameter and the friction variable is also varying that way and here it is the reverse trend we are seeing when flow uh, it is increasing the eccentricity ratio the flow parameter is also increasing but in case of friction variable uh, it is uh, it is reducing as the eccentricity ratio is increased the friction variable is reduced now coming to the variation now if the variability of the individual parameter between the rough and the smooth surfaces of the bearing then how it is going to affect okay so in that case you see if it is smooth it is something like uh, this it is quite less but if it is rough you can see how it is very so rough is really more sparsity can be observed here so likewise for wall ratio and uh, load bearing capacity also we can find the variability in a similar way the other attitude angle flow parameter friction variables are also very and the mass parameter load bearing capacity these are also changing and this is actually based on the degree of roughness now surface roughness is a very important parameter why because as we know in tribology surface roughness includes the friction and other parameters now when the friction is occurring between two matting surfaces the friction variables are uh, hello some sound is coming can you please uh, mute your mic yeah thank you uh, as the surface roughness changes that is the roughness in the surface and in case of bearing the surface is not plain surface it is curved surface and in the curved surface when there will be the roughness it is generally sometimes it is waviness in nature and when it is subjected to with some lubrication and the pressure which is occurring in between the bearing that is also varying in the entire domain so that's why when we consider the different degree of surface roughness roughness of the surface then we can see how the attitude angle how the flow parameter how the friction variables these are changing and these are varying also now we did the sensitivity analysis in sensitivity analysis we consider the film thickness soma film number attitude angle load bearing capacity mass parameter and wall ratio these are the parameter how it is changing with the percentage of variation and based on that we have chosen the parameter 
in case of deterministic analysis no issue you have, you can find that you can solve it very easily but when it is subjected to uncertainty when all the parameters are varying simultaneously i mean all this thin thickness so the attitude angle uh, mass parameter wall ratio everything is changing what will be getting ultimately to the output quantity of interest that sounds very interesting next this is also a uh, this is also a sensitivity analysis for the two axial group bearing you can see which parameter is coming to the maximum influence into it considering this surface roughness and the eccentricity ratio based on that how it is varying now major findings what we have done the findings we have done the mean value of load bearing capacity increases but the robustness of the value is decreasing with the increase of eccentricity ratio now robustness of the stability is higher at lower eccentricity ratio as you see if you see the diagram then you will be understanding how the surface roughness it is getting lower here for the mass parameter it is lower for the wall ratio this load bearing capacity this is not so important because it is coming low influence but if you comparatively if you see based on the eccentricity ratio the load bearing capacity is very highly influential okay now eccentricity ratio that's why is a very high sensitive to the stochastic compared to the surface roughness because surface roughness wise it is not so important here here you see but if you consider the eccentricity ratio then it is very very influential so depending on the parameter it differs now coming to the two lobe bearing this is the geometry of the two lobe bearing wherein the two lobes are given here and here the epsilon which is e by c nothing but the eccentricity ratio with respect to the bearing center r is here capital r it is the radius of the journal and c is the radial clearance small c phi is the attitude angle with respect to the bearing center ob and epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 here these are the eccentricity ratio of journal center o1 and with respect to the lobe 1 and the lobe 2 o2 and delta is the non dimensional preload parameters where is d by which is nothing but d by c where d is the preload and c is the radial clearance and phi 1 and phi 2 these are the attitude angle with respect to the lobe 1 and lobe 2 respectively okay so based on this geometry we have the empirical relationship between these two we have established geometrically okay so based on that we frame we need to frame the geometry and after that based on this we need to see the characteristics over this envelope how if we consider the uncertainty in the input parameters how the output parameter of my quantity of interest say like the load bearing capacity will be changed that we can look into it like epsilon 1 it is e1 by c epsilon is e by c delta is d by c and likewise here this is the flow diagram we have done wherein we have identified the different stochastic input parameters and all these parameters like uh, your epsilon like e minimum film thickness q delta these are the parameters based on that we get, we are trying to frame, get the what will be the output quantity of interest so first we made the variability in all the parameters at a time and then identify the stochastic nature of the input parameter because all the parameter will not vary in the similar fashion one will be in a different way one will be one may be some uniform distribution one may be the gaussian distribution one may be the poisson distribution one may be the 
other form of distribution. So depending on its characteristics, we need to define or we need to identify their nature of variability. And that nature of variability of the individual input parameters are to be considered. And based on that, now after we have to calculate the formulation and by using this Reynolds equation and then generate the input output data using FD model, that is finite difference model, and formulate the surrogate model. And after that, in surrogate model, we are generally framing a single equation, considering all the, which is composed of all the parameters, considering all the stochasticity or variability of all the input parameters. And simultaneously, we allow variation of all the parameters. And let us see how it is going to affect the output quantity. And that's what it is given in this diagram here. And then we use the, the Monte Carlo simulation. And we use here PNN model, which is polynomial neural network model. And based on that, we do the probability stick analysis. And finally, we get the output quantity of interest. Now, this is the validation for the two lobe bearing. And these are the parameters which are also validated with Lund and Thompson. And this is the schematic analysis of the PNN, which is the polynomial neural network model. Now, we know the neural network how it is done. I mean, if anyone doesn't know the neural network, for them, I'm just briefing that neural network, it is, it is, it is, it is idealized from the uh, concept of neurons. And it is basically the bio-inspired model. So in human, be in human being, we have the neurons in our nervous system. Because our body, entire body is composed of neurons and all neurons are connected with each other with different type of combinations. Okay. So for different type of combination, like if we have the heat in our hand, immediately we stretch out from the heat because of the neuron having the sense in our brain that we have some heat in our hand so our hand we are removing our hand so that is actually the message which goes by means of our nervous system to our brain that is central nervous system which which instructs us our other muscles and our body muscles of our hand that, that remove your hand immediately from that place because that is the heated zone okay so just like that all the neurons are connected. So similarly, the same pattern is idealized in case of our inputs also. Because all the inputs are interdependent if they are, then we are trying to frame from input variables. We have the relationship of all input variables in the order, second order of polynomial equation. So considering that second order polynomial equation between the, say suppose, here x1 and x2, x3, x4, like xn, different n number of variables are there. So there may be the relationship between x1 and x2 in nth order. So considering that polynomial order, we frame the partial description. And this partial description actually represents one polynomial equation representing x1 and x2. And likewise, Similarly, different combination of equation we are considered. And ultimately, from say x1 and x2, we get z1. From x2 and x3, we can z2. Similarly, from x1 and x3, we can get another z parameter. So like that, we can n number of z parameter. So all these z parameter then comes to uh, uh, under, under one cluster, which is called as the partial description. In partial description, what we do, 
we are actually selecting the best performance which gives the most accurate performance combination which is coming to the true value of the model because based on the deterministic mean value that is being cross checked and verified and based on that we choose the best combination and the best performance and finally it is coming to get the model out that's actually i mean i i am telling in in a very simple manner of the uh, this uh, concept of this polynomial neural network wherein the polynomial regression equation can be conceptualized in framing up this model and which is underlined under the bio inspired model which is known as the neural network model right okay so considering that pnn we have that considered this and we have considered instead of 10000 sample we consider only 64 number of sample here in 128 number of sample 256 number of sample and 512 number of sample now you can imagine how much the number of sample we have drastically reduced from 10000 to 64 number of samples so this 64 number of sample gives almost same result what we can get from 10000 number of sample so you can imagine that by using this surrogate model we can replace the entire long time consuming computational method okay so we have you can see this computation for uh, load bearing capacity friction variables flow parameter and wall ratio and this is the we call it the scatter plot and why this is scatter plot because in this scatter plot x axis represent the original model and y axis represent the pnn model which is polynomial neural network model which is having the lower sample uh, sample size which is in the tune of say 64 number and where in the original model which represents the value with some sample number of 10000 number of sample in case of original model in case of original model we are using 10000 sample now though these two values are when converging and when it is coming at 45 degree angle that means the pnn model and the original model are convergent in type in nature so this is also one kind of convergent study then we have used the manufacturing imperfections because we as i told you in uh, when in the first half uh, of our uh, this presentation that uncertainty quantification first we need to find out what are the sources of uncertainty so first sources may be the manufacturing imperfections in case of manufacturing imperfection such as the bearing clearance preload or the surface roughness these are taken as a gaussian distribution and the other input parameters such as eccentricity ratio supply pressure coefficient of viscosity these are taken as uniform distribution and finally we get the output quantities of interest and we get the load bearing capacity and you can see how it is varying the sparsity of load bearing capacity it is not getting a straight line this is the deterministic line and i think those who are familiar with tribology behavior of tribology you can see similar kind of uh, characteristics curves with the for the bearing load bearing capacity but this this shaded zone you are seeing this represents when all the input parameters are simultaneously varying so what exactly we are getting that is not exactly the value we will be getting it will be within a band of range of values or range of areas what we will be getting if we consider the variability in the input parameters so 
this is the this blue thick line this represents the mean value which is mean deterministic value while and this is the deterministic value this is the mean value and this is the deterministic value and this shed zone it represents the stochastic zone stochastic mapping of this now these are the different parameters uh, these are results these are we obtained for the different values of eccentricity ratios for the two lobe bearing here you see the friction value how it is changing uh, like earlier it was load bearing capacity now it is for the friction variable with the variation of the eccentricity ratio how this friction variable are changing and here this blue line deep line is the mean value red dotted line is the deterministic value and this sky blue shades represents the stochastic mapping or the stochastic zone wherein if the stochastic stochasticity of the input parameter if we consider and similarly we will be getting the different values of the this individual stochasticity of clearance preload eccentricity ratio surface roughness coefficient of viscosity and supply pressure respectively now the similar way we can get the flow parameters how it is changing and similarly the other individual variations we will be getting now you will be saying that for individual variation it is not coming too much but if you consider the combined variation it will be much more higher now this is for the wall ratio how it is changing and this mapping and all these results are already Already published in our published result for two load bearing. This is for load bearing capacity, and this is corresponding to the preload. If the earlier it was where the x-axis was eccentricity ratio, here now it is preload. Preload versus load bearing capacity. How it is changed? And similarly, we are getting the value. the range of values actually and this is for the friction variables this is for the flow parameters with respect to preload and for the individual variation how it is coming this is for the preload versus wall ratio and this is for the individual variations and now coming to this sensitivity part where we in this diagram we have projected both input and output and three dimensional plane where this if you say this x axis is input y axis will be output and z axis is the sensitivity so corresponding to the input how the output will be will have the sensitivity this is projected here okay so where c is the non dimensional clearance c bar is the non dimensional clearance epsilon is the eccentricity ratio delta is the non dimensional preload hs bar is the non dimensional surface roughness psi uh, uh, eta bar is the non dimensional coefficient of viscosity ps bar is the non dimensional surface pressure these are the inputs where in the outputs are w bar which are non dimensional load bearing capacity mu bar is the non dimensional friction variables q bar is the non dimensional side leakage and mu bar is the wall ratio and how much sensitive of input corresponding to the output these are plotted here now these are the analysis uh, findings as the mean value of the stochasticity of the load bearing increases the increasing of the uh, increase in eccentricity as well as the preload is identified and the mean value of the site leakage is also increased with the increase of eccentricity ratio 
mean value of coefficient of friction decreases with the increase of preload and likewise the trend is uh, we can observe from the diagram and feasibility study of the different meta model here it is done because uh, it is done on the different meta model like not only on pnn we have tested it for mars rbf uh, svm and mls uh, this is uh, this uh, pnn uh, which is polynomial, polynomial neural network model uh, mars model there is another model uh, there is another model like svm which is a uh, support vector machine the rbf model which is known as a radial basis function model mls which is the uh, mean least square method uh, model so different i mean there are plenty of other models are also there so based on that how the model uh, is performing corresponding to the the different uh, feasibility of the mean error because every model has some certain error so based on that uh, this is tested and we can see the corresponding to the sample size and one axis is the sample size another axis is the modeling method and uh, z axis is the mean error so corresponding to the different modeling method how corresponding to the different sample size how the error is also changing that is also shown over here okay now feasibility study for the uh, different meta model corresponding to the stiffness coefficient and for the corresponding uh, surrogate models and this is the error and this is the standard deviation how the standard deviation it is varying and this is the mean and the standard deviation for the coefficient of uh, i mean damping friction and this is the uh, error uh, in uh, this is the findings what we got it that the error in the hydrodynamic response predicted by svm has the highest compared to the other method so error so svm so we cannot use svm to that level of efficiency uh, for the other other meta models like mls have convergence issues uh, so mls shows the satisfactory ac accuracy compared to the other meta models so depending on that we need to choose the meta model which gives the best results and this is the the three lobe bearing uh, this is the geometry of the three lobe bearing like two lobe it is three lobe bearing and uh, here the geometry of this and we get the framing of the relationship of the geometry from uh, we get it and uh, this is also uh, validated uh, from this paper and uh, we also get the result but i am not going to i am skipping that results all this uh, part now i am coming to the conclusion part uh, we have seen the parameters shows more uniform at higher eccentricity ratio and at the higher magnitude variation and rough surface surface increases the mass parameter and load bearing capacities and the dynamic characteristics shows slight random behavior at higher eccentricity rate and dynamic characteristics are more sensitive uh, towards variation as compared to the steady state characteristics because generally uh, when dynamic uh, uh dynamic variation is considered in the uh, in the input parameters uh, it is definitely it is uh, always expected that it, it is going to give more influence on the uh, more sparsity more variation into the output quantity or influence uh, likewise stochasticity in preload uh, value also arises improper uh, arises due to the improper fitting and misalignment of the journal results and stochasticity in supply pressure and the oil viscosity shows significant effect on the hydrodynamic performance of the journal bearing and 
the future outlook is uh, experimental investigation to validate the computational prediction it is always required because uh, whatever we are doing this experimentally stochastic uh, variation uh, mapping is practically impossible but definitely by means of smaller results say if you can have 64 number of experimental samples that like we have projected if you can have 64 number of samples sample result we can uh, validate with the uh, by means of surrogate what we get the results we can validate with that also that's the study that uh, open and uh, nobody has done this till then next is the stochastic analysis uh, on the thermohydrodynamic uh, cases or the elastohydrodynamic cases. Uh, thermohydrodynamic cases where the variation of temperature is also taken into account because when the temperature is varied the, in the entire domain of the envelope at every point and every domain at every grid point the value of the different parameters will be changed <clears throat> and, and similarly such stochastic analysis also can be carried out for the other type of oil bearings and this is the paper uh, you can see this is the only paper uh, the stochastic dynamic behavior uh, as of now <coughs> you can find it and it is published in international journal of mechanical science and there is another paper which is under review. This is for two lobe uh, bearing for which I, I have shown you the data. <coughs> uh, one of my students, uh, Vishwajit Roy, he is doing. It was initially started by uh, one of my MTech students, Kumar Moharshi. And later on, it is, uh, uh, it is extended by Vishwajit Roy. Uh, and uh, still it is going on. We have another two conference paper. One is, uh, it is already uh, in IIT Madras, one conference, it is already published. And another paper, it is uh, already accepted in one ISRO conference. And this is the reference uh, papers wherein you can get the detail of this formulation part. Thank you. And if you have any uh, uh, any questions, uh, I am open for that. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the session is open for the question and answer. So I request the participants please put forward your question on the basis of, on the theme of that topic to the expert, please. Is there any question from the participant side? Please put your question put forward to the expert. No question from the participants. That means everybody has understood everything. Or there may be another possibility, nobody has understood anything. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, we are also learning this. We are always uh, on the learning curve. So there are a lot of, plenty of things is uh, required to be done. If you there is the one question. Yeah. So there is one question in your chat box by yeah. Tesh Gupta. Okay. What happened when the input parameters are uh, are taken as level? Like in many manufacturing operations, the input parameters are taken as level instead of floating numbers. How the how to design uncertainty study using levels at input parameters? The concern if we get the floating numbers as input that can't be 
realized while determining the deterministic results. Yeah, it is uh, definitely when we are using the floating numbers as input, we will be getting the corresponding output into it. So, in case of deterministic, if we consider the whole number, so are you talking of the whole number? If you are talking of the whole number as a deterministic number, it is not necessary you will be getting the whole number as output. Likewise, if you consider the floating number at different levels, now in case of different levels, when we are considering the input, we need to consider the different bands of the input. So we need to consider the deterministic mean of that level of the input. Like in case of say in our uh, tribological study, we have considered the parameters like we have considered here, if you see uh, the input as eccentricity ratio or the surface roughness. So these parameters uh, are always taken not in whole number. These are always floating numbers and these are also taken as in, at different levels. And generally, if you talk about the surface roughness, these are we are having the CLA value or RA value or RZ value. So we have the mean value we need to consider and based on that, we need to frame what will be the variation we will consider. We have to initialize the variation variability. And based on that, how much the output it will influence because of that variability, how much variability will be in the output quantity of interest, say the load bearing capacity here in W bar that we can frame. Now there will be two analysis. One will be when individually it is varying, only roughness parameter is varying. Then what will be the <coughs> variation in the output quantity of interest as load bearing capacity? And another will be simultaneously all the parameters are varying with its own bound of variability. Then what will be the variability in the load bearing capacity? That we need to map. Sir, one more, one more question in the, your chat box by Harpreet Singh. Yeah. In pin on disk tribometer, how we can conduct uncertainty analysis for friction or when? Yeah. As I told you, uh, there is always a limitation of experiments uh, in uh, for the stochastic analysis or uncertainty analysis for the experimental work is done because for uncertainty analysis we generally do the monte carlo analysis for probabilistic analysis there may be the non probabilistic analysis also i am not touching that non probabilistic different other methods also there only if we are considered the probabilistic analysis we need to have monte carlo simulation and in monte carlo simulation we need to have minimum 10,000 number of samples. Now, 10,000 number of uh, experiments on your pin on this timometer, I think it is next to impossible. I mean, it will, you can imagine how much time it will be taking. I mean, you can definitely, anybody can try, but that's not the, I mean, uh, I mean practical way of doing the experiments. What uh, I suggest you, uh, if you can have the uh, you can we can have the surrogate model and that model which will be in the tune of say 64 number of samples where it will be required and from that from 64 number of experiments you can carry it out and if you can and that is also quite time consuming it's not like that 64 number of sample experiments is quite uh, quite quite time consuming okay so if you can do that, then you can carry out some uncertainty relationship. You can establish that uncertainty relationship. But uh, if you want to go for the 
uh, crude brute force Monte Carlo method that will require minimum 10,000 number of samples. Okay. Any more hey. questions from the participants? Please put it forward. We are waiting for your question. Please put forward your question to the expert. If there is any question, then only. Okay. I think there is no question from the participants, sir. So thank you very much for giving this lecture, nice lecture. Because in tribology, the experimental is the thing is a major part which plays a major role but the considering the assumption and different parameters in the experimental as well as computational work is very essential so this lecture will, will be very uh, actually can say very important for all of us who's working on the field of tri in the field of tribology so thank you for giving this nice lecture sir and thanks uh, to the participants also for listening carefully now I request to the participants, please uh, join once again after your lunch at 2.25. We will start 2.30 sharply. So please join uh, on or before 2.25 p.m. today with the same link. Thank you. Thank you, sir, once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.